Hey everybody, welcome to my commute. Um, those of you that are avid or even rabid supporters of my channel know that I've been shooting the open and close of my last couple of episodes during my commute. It certainly gives me a more positive way to use the collective three hours a day I spend in the car getting to and from work. And I certainly enjoy doing this much more than blowing the horn, swearing at other drivers and have them swear back at me. Now this episode is another piece of the puzzle in coffee can guitar world. If you don't uh, have an interest in that and you're just simply a cigar box guitar person, hey, check into my uh, future episodes. There might be something for you. Uh, but I have been making uh, a few coffee can guitars lately because there is a demand for them. The artists that uh, I deal with, I've found that uh, when they pull one out in a show, people are kind of amused by what they are and then kind of impressed with uh, how they play. And that's certainly more an indicator of the, the, the artist's talent more so than it is my skill set with a coffee can. This episode is kind of a follow-up I've done uh, how to build a whole coffee can guitar, how to put a pickup up on the neck, uh, how to cut a hole in the body. Uh, I touched on the topic in uh, the, the scale and intonation episode as well as the headstock episode. So if you piece all those together, you're pretty much gonna be able to, to build one. Now what this episode is about is lining up uh, the pieces of the neck the body anyway I've made some templates that make this really easy because I found the first couple I made putting a straight line on a round surface seemed to be a problem for me so there's some cutting to do and some things like that and I found a couple shortcuts and made templates that I think are going to help you and I'm going to show you how to build those templates but the inspiration for this episode actually came uh, from me right realizing that you know everything is lining up for me it's almost like the planets are lining up I see evidence of it everywhere and um, I'm gonna share some of that with you right now but there's one thing that I want to get out of the way that is not lining up you know it revolves around my hairdo yeah I got my money's worth and no it's not a lawnmower or weed eater accident. Now, someone at work has been spreading the rumor that I use a Floby to cut my hair. Okay, that's just not true. And I have proof of that. And I want to dispel that myth right now. So, you don't know what a Floby is. Okay, well... Lucky for you, I just happen to have one in my car. And imagine that. Anyway, you can clearly see from this labeling, this picture here, and trust me, from the instructions inside that there is no way that this quality haircut could be achieved with a Floby. So, let me put that away. So you, co-worker, it's not like I'm a snowflake or anything that gets my feelings hurt, but you are obviously a liar and you need to repent and I know I have many skills that I'm very good at but absolving you of your sins is not among them so that's on you buddy hey all right here we are at the workbench and the clown suit has been replaced by the Mr. Airplane Man t-shirt, see that, and the Quiet Birdman baseball cap. Okay, coffee can guitars. Yeah, I've been building a few of them lately. And, um, you know, the first one I built, uh, it's long gone out on the road somewhere now. But you'd be surprised at what it takes to find the way to line up the neck right, where you get this hole right. It's uh, deep enough and wide enough uh, to fit the neck in. But while I got this one out, you know, I've been uh, lucky with this one. I got Colin and Cameron from Smokestack Relics. I got Tim Lowman, Low Volts. 
Reverend Peyton, uh, you know who that is, Luther Dickinson, Catfish Keith, and of course the one that's most important to me, my own Tammy, but I love this guitar, and of course it's the one that won the local county fair. So I did an episode a while ago, and I'll send you a link, that'll be up in the corner up here in a second, there it is, about how to cut this hole in a coffee can so it will saddle your neck in like so everything be tight now I am working still working on this um, coffee can guitar and it's about time to cut this in here now what I used to do is I would take a square like so and I would line up with the center of that seam. That's that's always a constant on these. I would line this up and make a mark there and then flip it over and figure, okay, it kind of looks like that. Maybe the center of this writing was there and make a line and then try to lay everything off of that and take a, uh, a piece of neck and, and try to line up the middle and do that. So... I've got an easier way to do this, and I'm going to show you how to make a template um, that fits on the top of here where you can just spin this around and, and line it up any way you want. Now, I do like to cover up this part of the can because, as you can see, it gives. And if you put your bridge up here and it's given this way or this way, it's going to be a problem. So I end up putting one of these on. I put a graphic on it, and then depending on where my scale ends up see the episode about scale remember that you don't just lay everything out until you know where your scale is but anyway i'm going to know where the bridge is going to go pop that on here somewhere like that but anyway i'm going to show you how to make a jig that makes it real easy to figure out where you need to cut those uh holes for the neck in the coffee can. so we're going to take this camacho box again this is my box of choice when I do build cigar box guitars, look how thick they are. They're durable. They'll take a beating and uh, get bounced around in, in the tour bus or whatever. And that's why I like them. But let's go to this one. This one's going to play a critical role. So the first thing I need to do is carefully remove the top of this box. Like so. Then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take the Camacho box... And it's going to help me remove the sides of this box. All right, now I'm going to put the Camacho box away for when I want to build a guitar. Now back to this one. I'm going to carefully remove the sides. There's staples in there. And then I'm going to take my trusty election pencil. I'm going to take the can I need. And I'm going to draw a circle around here. Now, I actually need to be the this, this circle represents the outside of the can here. I actually need the circle to be the size of the can in here and not outside the wall. So we've got some work to do to cut this out on the scroll saw and then take it to the sander. Let's do that now. Okay, we're over here at the scroll saw, and you want to remember, we this it represents the outside of the can, and we actually want to cut right inside of that line because we're going to have to sand this down so it fits into the top of the can. Okay, so we're done with the scroll saw. Now we're going to uh, grind this down on the belt sander to where it fits right down in here. Now when you're doing that, you're kind of letting this spin around. You're letting this, you're going to be firm with this, but not so much that it, it creates a flat spot. You certainly don't want to be working down in here because if this touches here, what well, touches here is going to kick back at you. But anyway, let me sand this down and show you. Now, when you start getting close, especially if you keep this thing round, um, and you're almost there and there's just a little bit more to take off um, I'm going to show you one of those don't try it at home things um, so I want to make sure there's no sawdust on my 
uh, fingertips. So I'm going to do the same thing your grandma used to do in church to pat down your hair, the old spit hair game, and do that on both sides. And then I'm just going to kind of let this spin. Let's see how that works out again. Don't try this at home. All right, there we go. That fits in there perfectly. This will become our template. Uh, and now, when we trace this out on another piece of wood, because it fits in here, then the next one will fit, and we won't have to do this every time so much that we uh, take it to the scroll saw. All right, back over here. Um, I've got a couple of these caught. Whenever you're, you're, you're making uh, or doing a task like this, Always cut a few so you're ready to go. And you want to remember that these coffee cans, these old, I always use two pound coffee cans. Regardless of the brand, they're all a standard size. So it, it never has, ha, hurts to have a few of these around. Uh, but instead of having the outer uh, perimeter now, we have the inner and we have a template. So you want to put that away. Now there's something else that, that we want to know. Um, in order to make the template um, and that's kind of where is the center and uh, where is a straight line on the circle now we could take one of those rulers that finds the middle or if you don't have one of those and you know that if you start at six three is over here and nine is over here you can do that or there's a really easy way to do this and that's just to take a piece of cardstock and draw a circle now i could do the same thing with a razor knife just go around and end up with a circle or in this case i'm going to use a scissors to cut the circle out okay there we go i've got a circle here now if i fold it in half like so i've got a straight line if I fold it in half again, I've got two straight lines, and what do you know? I've got the middle, hope none of these cans are in the way, but I've got the middle. I've got a straight line there, here, here, and here. Now. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to lay that over one of these round pieces that I've cut, like so. There we go. And regardless of where I put this, I'm going to know where the middle is and where a straight line on the edge is. So I'm going to take my awl. I'm just going to tap that like that. And while it's there... I'm just going to make a mark here, 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 and here. Now, with those marks, I can take my flush cut saw, find the mark, and I'm just going to put a little mark right there, right there. there and there you get the idea so i'm going to touch those up a little bit and make them straight and a little bit deeper but whenever i set this on a can i'm going to know where the middle is and where the edges are okay so i've got a mark here 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 and here uh, i know they're straight across from each other i know the middle is there and and of course, I'm going to put this away because in case I ever need to make one, it's right there. So I put that in my file cabinet. But any of these cans, we all know that they always have that seam. Everyone has that seam. So in order to find the middle of the can, all I have to do is take that seam, follow it up, make a little mark there. And regardless of where that is, I just put this here like so. And bingo, I've got the center of the can. I've also, 
uh, have the ability to line things up over here. I could divide this into quadrants in case I wanted to put my jacks or my volume controls, or whatever I want to do. It gives me a mark to do that. Now, I'm going to do the same thing, make similar marks on another one because we're actually going to use two of these for a template. Um, this one is actually going to be used later on. I'm going to mark it off and I'm going to be able to put the pattern here for where we bolt through the top to put the neck on and then uh, put the nuts inside the can. Okay, I've got a piece of neck board here. It's just stock. I've not done anything with it yet. Um, I'm going to put this under here because I think it offers some contrast. But I know that this is 38 millimeters wide or inch and a half. And, um, and I'm not going to have the metric argument again, but I've marked it off at 19. I'm going to do the same thing about right here. Um, that way I know where the center is. Now... I'm going to try to make something where this piece of wood along with a couple that are long enough to, well, let me get the right can here, to match this hole starting at the top of the can there. So what's going to happen here is I'm going to take a piece of this. I'm going to mount a piece of this on top that's long enough here and then do the drop downs because this sits down in here this will come off flush and then I just make a mark here I don't know if you can see that or not like so and I attach those to that piece that's sitting here so I can take my square here could have been a little bit better prepared and put that there and I know that that mark is right here now I'm going to take this handy dandy gadget because I know this is the middle I know this is the middle and I just can basically line up the middle like so better yet I could put my square on it run it down the middle and then I know by putting this here and this here that I am in the middle now that I know that I'm in the middle see there I can see the line through my cuts I just do this that's going to be the edge of the can so what I'm going to want to do now is that line that I marked here that represents this there it is We'll just do it again. We'll make a mark flush with the top of the can there. And I need to cut two of these. They will sit right here. We know that the edge of the can is here. And be like one there, one here. Then this will attach to here. We'll actually attach this. To here this will actually sit on the can like this of course this will be upside down we flip this over and it will sit there and we will know exactly by lining up this center line from underneath with this ridge again everything will line up perfect so now I'm just going to measure I'm going to give myself enough room where this sticks out a little bit I'm going to go from there to there Give myself a line, mark that off, and then I'm also going to take these, make a mark there, make my cut there, make my mark there, and now I can take this to my chop saw and very quickly knock these out. All right, I have cut this like this. I'll be able to drill a little hole in here to hang it up on my pegboard. But, again, using that mark there and that mark there, I'm able to mark the radius of the coffee can. Know that I'm right in the middle because I've marked these lines here. 
and then I've used the cut can to mark the hole. I know that it fits because it drops right in there if you can see that. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to set a can on here like so. My marks are covered up there and I'm going to put these here. Now I want you to notice that the top rim of the can sticks out ever so slightly. I don't want to just put these on here and then glue this directly there without the can there because what I'm going to want to do is I'm going to want to make sure that that fits. Again, that ridge sticking out. If I glue without that there, it's going to give me a problem. So I'm going to take some tight bond and I am going to glue these here but I'm also going to glue this onto here. So, get some tight bond, put it on here, here, and I'll show you what that looks like. Now I'm going to take my drill and put a pilot hole here. And I'm going to put one of the little screws that we put our tuners in with here. Then I'm going to do a final check to make sure that that can drops down in there like that. I'm going to flip this upside down with this in place with the screw. And then I'll be able to run a couple of screws in from this side and let it set up overnight. I don't have to worry about that being in the middle because these cans drop down right there. And you know from watching the cigar box or the, the coffee can guitar episode, that's where I like to put my piezo uh, down in the slot uh, where the wood drops or lays over the top of it. But anyway, we just carefully flip this over make sure everything is okay push down now i'm just going to put a couple of longer screws in here to hold this and i'm going to let it set up overnight All right, there we go. The last thing I want to show you here, it's not pretty, I can paint it or whatever. Uh, I'm also going to drill a hole through here so I can hang it on the wall like so. But the last thing I've done here is I found the center of these two guides that ultimately show me where I'm going to have to mark my can. I've marked the center of those here. You can see, again, 19 uh, millimeters. And I've come up here on the side here and made sure that I marked that on both sides. Now. Why is that? Well, I'm finally going to mark this can off. And you can see that this drops right down over the can because this fits inside the top. I can spin it any way I want. And what I'm going to want to do now is, you see that line right there that I always talk about, that seam line right there? Can you see it? As long as that mark lines up there, I'm good. I'm right in the middle of the can wherever I am. The last thing I want to do is make sure that I've got something that tells me, based on all this being lined up, where my holes are going to go for the neck here and here. 
Now I'm not going to do a template for the bridge because again based on how you've laid out your scale your bridge might be here it might be here or whatever and you know that the pickup is up out of the way uh, on the neck. So that will be the last thing we'll do is we'll make a little template here that shows you where this line is going to be so when you drop your piece on you'll know exactly where to drill. Okay this one is really simple remember this is the one that we have kept around to make sure that we don't have to relive this nightmare of um, tracing around the outside and then grinding it down because it's too big we just put this on another piece of wood go around go straight to the scroll saw cut that circle out on the inside there won't be too much sand and then it just drops right down in here but what we're going to need to know on this next one is where do we drill the bolts that go through the top of the can to hold the neck on once this top board is on so what I've done here is I've used this template to do the same thing I made marks where each of the quadrants is so I know the line is this way and this way and then what I've done is I've set this on here lined it up like so taken a clamp once I can feel that everything is lined up and then because this and this are at the outside of the board I just basically laid a straight edge and drew a line there took and put a clamp there took this one off and did a line there now my my bolts are usually going to go through about here and here and here and here so I can see well, maybe I want to put a mark there so I just run a straight edge once I know where those marks are there here and drill a couple of holes there and that gives me the template once I've got my piece of wood that I'm going to use for the top once I've got this lined up so I know where my holes are cut I just take this off set this on line it up again with that mark with there and I'll know exactly where to drill my holes drill pilot holes and I'm good to go so now what used to take me quite some time to lay out is simply mark line it up with that middle of the seam so let off boom 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 one can done here's the next can doesn't matter they're all standard size again line up the mark boom 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 flip it over boom 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 see I can just blow these out one right after the other just like so okay cut them out slip in the neck drops right in notice I've got that drop down done we've talked about that before put this end up get both ends stable like so see I've got that marked and that marked put a piece of wood in there doesn't matter which way the wood is turned at all because I've got that mark that mark I've got this being the top center line there line up that mark and that mark simply hold it there make four marks drill pilot hole grab the other drill big hole
these are through now I'll take this hold this go all the way down through the neck do that four times you don't need to watch that that'll be there take my 25 and a half inch scale ruler that we made in the scale and intonation episode take my nut put it up on the top of the neck find the center of the nut bring this over hold it down draw a line and that's where my bridge is going to go it's just that simple so got any questions send me an email i hope uh you like this and i hope it makes it easy for you uh, give me a like uh, check out my playlist and I'll see you next time.